guys, hello and welcome to another sea friendly reef video. Today we are talking about LPS corals from currents to temperature to coral stinging. You'll get to know the seven most important factors about keeping this kind of coral. Please enjoy! By the way, Tolga is a true LPS lover and will use his aquarium today for further inspect some animals. Let's begin with the first point, the best food for LPS corals. LPS corals are able to eat coarser food in contrast to SPS corals, for example. It is recommended to use zooplankton, frozen food, mice, lobster eggs, dry food and artemia for bigger animals, as well as fresh clams, for example, for acanthophilias. Yes, they can eat whole pieces of clams, unbelievable! Another point which is always a big topic in my comments are the perfect water parameters for LPS corals. LPS can handle fluctuations very well. At a phosphate of about 0.06 they start to stress. The higher the better. LPS tanks can handle parameters of more than 0.09 to 1 to about 2.5 phosphate. Please never do that with an SPS tank. Nitrate has to be adjusted. So if you've got a phosphate of 0,1, it's the best to adjust nitrate to 10. So adjust phosphate to food, then adjust 100 times nitrate. Easy to remember. And it's the best to dose KH higher, about 8 to 8.5. Okay, another question I often hear is, what are the best LPS corals for small tanks, especially for beginners? One of the best corals you can choose are Indonesian trachophilias. These animals inflate well. Also you can use scolies, they are easy to keep. And it doesn't have to be the most expensive high-end scully, there are also some cheaper ones on the markets. One of my favorite corals, which is also easy to keep, are acanthophilias. Please be careful with oifilias, they are a bit more sensitive, especially the torches like here in Peter's tank. Then the most important buying tip for you is only buy inflates animals, never harmed animals. That is so important because it doesn't matter what your dealer is saying, if you buy a harmed animal, the chance is high that it dies in your tank. Then there is another huge topic while keeping LPS corals, nettle stung. For example, scolies are always attack others, but never themselves. So you can place a scoly next to a scoly. Normally, this is no problem. Acanthophilias do nothing, so you can place them next to other corals. No problem. Lobophilias are the worst. They are going to kill nearly every other coral in the same area. Also, Enchinada species, just look the same as Acanthostria, are more dangerous than others. So the best is to take a closer look at the coral you want to keep. Next point, temperature. It's no problem to keep LPS corals a bit colder than others. So about 20 to 5 to 23 degrees Celsius. It's also the best to place your LPS corals not in a high light zone. So please turn your LEDs a little bit down for that type of coral. And the last point is current. Keep them out of the flow. Scolimias, acantophilia, trachophilia, doesn't matter. They are not wanna stand directly in strong flow. But there is an exception. Euphilias, they love good flow. So the best current setup for an LPS tank is a pulse mode to move everything and then full current, for example, three to four times a day to flush dead areas in the tank. All right, now you know some of the most important factors about keeping 
LPS corals. If you know some more important facts, write it down in the comments and see you next week. Thank you for watching.